Which gives me another dub. Hi right, guys. Well, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking a seriously over the top beautiful September night here in the collapse of everything. That beautiful half moon on the rise over the mountains here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is now Wednesday night, September 11th, 2024. September 11th. Uh, hmm, I know there's something about this day. I just can't play September 11th. Anyway, whatever it is, uh, probably did not have anything to do with the collapse of everything on any level. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank, uh, oh boy, who was it? Uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Eric Lee, was it? Is oh boy. I always need to say thank you, but I can't remember who to say thank you to. This is, I want to send a, a thank you to Eric Michaels, not Eric Lee, over there at medium.com, uh, he has a, uh, an excellent uh, essay today in Medium, What is Our Actual Reality? What is our actual reality? And we are going, I'm going to touch on this, uh, in the Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup Rant on Friday where... Eric says, you know, it ain't going to happen. N none of this shit is going to happen. So he uh, links us over to several other excellent ain't going to happen articles. And I was thinking of including uh, this one that I'm going to read out in Friday's rant. But, you know, we have not heard from this fellow whose name I cannot begin to pronounce, this Greek Fellow George Sacraclides, maybe T A S T S A. There, there, there you go. This is an excellent one for uh, the 9 11 rant. George T S A K R A K L I D E S. E e you know, why don't these Greek people just rewrite their language? You know, George, we can deal with that, but Sacraclides, I have some vague memory back when I was doing interviews. <clears throat> I had George all lined up for an interview. We were all set to do an interview. Then uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether George, did George do something to piss me off or more likely did I do something to piss George off? But something happened. I think it was just because I couldn't pronounce his, his, his goddamn name. And so I canceled the interview. So I am sorry I cannot uh, point you to my interview with George because I've never had it. Maybe someday we'll get George on the show. Uh, but anyway, we're going to put the little dog. You want to go to bed? We're going to put this little dog to bed <coughs> and read uh, George's, we'll just call him George. George's, this was his essay from August 16th titled, The Great Solutions Swindle, Capital products, technology, and the civilizational lie. The civilizational lie is what it's really all about. Take it away, George. <clears throat> Global capital has deceived billions who cared about the planet by selling them green solutions that are anything but green simply by virtue of the fact that these solutions are 
products, all products are harmful to the planet, however green their credentials might be. Bringing a product to market inflicts immense devastation. The minute a product comes online, a huge chain of carbon intensive operations is activated as well as an army of specialized employees mobilized to cater to those tasks. Even a solar panel makes use of all the carbon intensive industries our self-destructive economy depends on. Research, design, extraction, construction, electricity, transportation, communication, marketing, buying, selling. All these people need to use energy and transportation for their work and their meetings. They must be paid, which means more money circulating in the economy, causing more consumption and more carbon emissions. <coughs> in other words, any product created for the purpose of profit, which is the reason I think products are created, uh, is incredibly toxic to the planet, however green it is, whatever claims it makes that it can cancel out, yes, cancel out its hidden emissions. Aside from deceiving consumers, the green industrial complex has also deceived itself by appropriating the term sustainability and plastering it on every product and job title it creates. It has built an image of sustainability as a path for growth, construction, and expansion, in other words, more capitalism. The average citizen today thinks of sustainability solutions as new technologies and innovations as opposed to the most obvious forms of sustainability, minimalism, deconstruction, reuse, repair, upcycling, simplification, contraction, degrowth, and rewilding. And of course, uh, I would add to your list, George, keeping your pecker in your pants and not letting your knickers down. Just, I'm just going to throw that in there. Uh, Anyway, uh, as opposed to the most obvious form of sustainability, how about not bringing another human onto the planet? Anyway, back to George. I guess, I guess George just, I, I, I don't know, I guess his mind was somewhere else. <laughs> back to George. This deception is the result of deliberate manipulative propaganda from global capital as it tries to find ways to continue to operate within the new set of parameters. The vast majority of today's sustainability solutions are ultimately not solutions, but problems. This is not an issue exclusive to the sustainability industry. I love that, the sustainability industry. There you go. I, we have a new term for the, for the uh, collapse 
dictionary, the sustainability industry. Yes, this is not an issue exclusive to the sustainability industry, but a behavioral and cognitive bias humans have always suffered from is how they view technology rather than simply undoing our damage. We prefer to invent technologies which repair it, forgetting each time that technologies always, always introduce new problems. This, of course, perpetuates the cycle. Humanity has spent thousands of years continuously inventing new technologies to solve the problems that the previous technologies caused. This vicious cycle has put technology in charge of the future of humanity rather than the other way around. <clears throat> the heaven. The heaven. The 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 that technology would save us was tragically misguided, given that technology ultimately only cares about itself a species which considers this as progress surely does not deserve to progress down the evolutionary journey. It has already amputated itself. The problem with minimalism, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here, I uh, reading this from my seven foot by seven foot converted tool shed. Uh, is that called upcycling, George? I think converting a, a beat up old tool shed into a seven foot by seven foot tiny house is called minimalism. The problem with minimalism and degrowth is that they don't fit within a capitalist economy. Well, I get $80 a night for this seven foot by seven foot uh, tiny house. So don't tell me that minimalism doesn't fit in with a capital. Anyway, uh, I won't argue with you on this one, George. Our economy only knows how to thrive through construction, destruction, exploitation, and the generation of waste. Even more worrisome is that human consciousness, by its nature, seems to only understand doing and achieving and has limited cognition for undoing or stopping altogether. We are hyperactive, hyper-thinking beings who look down upon the cessation of any of our activities while being too, brow too proud to simply undo our errors, as this would be a shameful admission of defeat. Instead, if we invent a new technology that promises to repair things, we are saviors and geniuses. <clears throat> the extremely negative bias humans have towards deconstructive and recessive solutions to our problems is largely responsible for the worsening situation we have trapped ourselves in. <clears throat> sustainability movements. Oh God, sustainability movements. Like the uh, 
the Eco Village in uh, Ithaca, New York, is a classic example of a sustainability movement, you know, with the four-story eco condos. I think that's what he's talking about, or anyway. Sustainability movements have failed because they have been bought out by capitalism, which exemplifies this maximalistic bias towards growth. The global corporatocracy has repositioned itself very effectively as a green industry who gets things done, when in fact, if they knew anything about sustainability at all, they should be working to get things undone. <clears throat> On LinkedIn, you will find hundreds of thousands of professionals who dare to put eco-warrior in their job title when in fact they are corporate fraudsters selling carbon credits and other green services. Equally, there are hundreds of thousands of highly paid job advertisements to environment and sustainability positions. With all these jobs out there, you would think we're doing something right. Yet, curiously, the planet is heading faster and faster toward Armageddon. <clears throat> these jobs are in fact the reason, most of them being full-time greenwashing positions helping global capital conceal its crimes and carry on. It is easy to see what they advocate. They talk about an energy transition when it should be energy reduction. They talk about family and prosperity when it should be population decrease. All right. Thank you, George. One more time. You know, these sustainability experts talk about family and prosperity when it should be population decrease. They talk about jobs and growth when it should be rapid economic contraction. They talk about protecting nature when it should be about simply leaving nature alone. The more obsessed humans become with solutions to the climate crisis, the further they will fail as long as these solutions are designed to be funded by their own profits supported by technologies that come with their own problems and promise continued population growth and, and prosperity for all. Thank you, George, whatever your last name is, for that, uh, that fine, refreshing, to the point, uh, as I say, I thought that deserved a, a full reading instead of uh, just a passing mention on the ain't gonna happen. Uh, but I would like to uh, officially welcome George aboard the ain't gonna happen train. So I, I, I do want to let you guys know, I uh, invited Bill Reese to uh, join uh, me and Elliot Jacobson for an Ain't Gonna Happen uh, interview. And uh, I guess uh, we're being ignored by Bill Reese. So I don't think the Ain't Gonna Happen uh, 
interview with Bill Reese is going to happen. If anyone out there knows Bill, uh, tell him that Sam is looking for him. But anyway, I need to wrap this up. Go look at that beautiful moon through the willow tree out there while I still can. Bye, guys. All right.